Hello and welcome to today's webcast presentation where we have Checkin.com Group presenting their year-end report 2023. With us presenting we have CEO Christopher Kassel and CFO Martin Boimel. Feel free to use the form on the located to the right for questions. Um, and with that said, please go ahead with your presentation. Uh, thank you, Jesper. Uh, so my name is uh, Christopher Kassel, uh, I'm the CEO and with us today we also have Martin who is our CFO and I think uh, first of all thanks for everyone listening in to this presentation. We will keep a similar format to what we have done previous quarters which is uh, that I speak a bit about the business and the outlooks uh, and the Martin goes into some of the numbers uh, from the report to highlight uh, a few things. Uh, but all in all, we, we expect uh, you as a listener to have read the report and to already be somewhat familiar uh, with us as a company. So we'll, we'll go st pretty much uh, straight to the point. And starting off, I think I, I write in the CEO letter that I'm grateful to begin the new year with the strength. Uh, and I feel this... Uh, the sort of step shift we have done last year and the, the, the profitability and the cash flow strength that we're having uh, feels uh, very, very good to have now that we start 2024, uh, especially that we have strengthened the cash flows and the profitability. And I think that this quarter shows that uh, the profitability uh, Im improvements that we have had last year, where we have five-folded our EBITDA during the year compared to, to 2022, is trickling down as well into to, to real cash uh, in the bank account. We have more than 16 million SEC uh, in cash flow from operating activities during the quarter. And uh, despite that we invest heavily in, in R&D and, and, and amortize on some of the loans, et cetera, we still strengthen the net cash position by more than uh, seven, uh, by almost uh, seven, uh, seven million sec. And we do this uh, despite that we see a slight seasonal weaker usage than expected from, from our clients. Uh, and <clears throat> this profitability that, that, that we see enables long-term investment for us. Uh, we, we take all the investments in R&D and product from the cash flow that our operating activities generates. We also, as I said, amort amortize on our loans and that strengthens our equity ratio with 86 or to 86%. So we're in a strong financial position uh, for, the, for the year that begins. Uh, and as I said, just to repeat, the net cash is strengthened by se almost 7 million uh, compared to, to last quarter. So we're now generating cash. Uh, and this allows us to think quite long-term to do what's best for, for the company uh, in the coming year. The organic growth uh, is at 38% year on year, uh, stopping at 27.2 million sec for the quarter. Uh, it, that is slightly lower than the Q3 uh, number uh, mainly due to seasonality usage from, from, from the travel sector, which is our biggest, most important sector. Um, there is also some currency uh, shifts where we invoice almost all our clients in, in euro currency and we report this in SEK. But, uh, but the travel segment has had seasonally weak usage. Um, it's the most important customer vertical and uh, seasonally, we have seen weaker volumes during the winter uh, compared to the to the sort of peak usage of the late summer, and I think we should expect continued weak vol volumes in, in Q1. And uh, at the same time, we have during the, the fourth quarter rolled out. Uh, more uh, functionality together with our biggest clients uh, and, and we are taking a larger share of check-in, check which means that actually our expectations for the full year have strengthened, but as we say, we think uh, volumes in Q1 uh, should be quite weak uh, as well. 
uh, and the quarters rollout uh, should provide strong leverage. So the cooperation with our largest cost customers have developed well, as I said, um, and the technology rollout has continued during Q4. We have added new modules. I write some about this in the CEO letter. Um, added new model modules, but also uh, taking a larger share of the total check-ins. Um, and this should uh, provide the leverage, as I said, when the volumes increase again uh, from the existing clients, uh, and especially this large European airline uh, that we have been working with uh, for a long time. But we've also seen deep discussions with several international airlines. And I think um, the potential of these discussions are, are obviously uh, really, really uh, promising. And uh, with some luck, I think uh, we can add a few airlines uh, uh, in the coming year. And that would, of course, uh, be really a shift, uh, a further shift upwards in terms of revenue generation. Because our focus continues to be on the large customers, on the enterprise players. Uh, we see that this, th these players requires long-term uh, thinking and persistent work over several quarters, maybe slightly longer lead times, but uh, once they go live, uh, hopefully great the leverage. And uh, we speak about the large uh, fintech uh, company, which is a great example of this, where we are integrated, we are in a revenue generating phase, and we have during quarter four and still working uh, hard to increase their usage and add more use cases uh, for our software. And uh, the, the potential of that client within FinTech is, is massive. Uh, if we play our cards well, I think uh, it, uh, it has a potential to repeat uh, the success we have had in the travel, uh, in the travel segment. Uh, but of course, it will take several quarters and it requires uh, continued work. Uh, we also have in general, I think, a stronger commercial uh, position than, than ever, really, in terms of the pipeline and, and the discussions we're having. Not only that we're speaking with several client, potential clients, but the size of each of those clients are, are, are very promising. So uh, we will keep focusing on enterprise clients, and hopefully some of this will translate into to revenue uh, in the coming year. Um, also just want to mention that a lot of mine and Martin's uh, work is actually around acquisitions and M&A. Uh, and we, are, we see that there's still uh, plenty of potential in the market to, to create shareholder value by additional acquisitions. And just reminding what we're looking for, we're looking for leading technology within niche areas that can strengthen our offering, oh, sorry, our offering to to our clients and, and to the end user. Um, and also excellence in the team and product-driven companies with strong momentum and growth. We're not looking for M&A to, to increase the revenue sort of the next quarter. We see this as a long-term long -term game and, and, and looking for acquisitions that make our product offering better and, and that ac accelerate the growth uh, long-term. Um, and I hope to come back with some news in this area in, in the year to come. Um, also, it's the second quarter with new financial targets. Uh, as you know, we have a variant of the classic SOS metric rule of 40. Uh, but our goal is to, to maximize the sum of revenue growth per share uh, and EBTA margin. And uh, we feel uh, confident with the ambition to exceed 80% in this metric on an annual basis. Uh, this quarter is, is at 69%, uh, slightly below the ambition. Last quarter was way above. But again, here the important thing is over time uh, and on an annual basis that we keep uh, delivering on this metric. We believe if we can do that, that we will continue to create big shareholder value also in the future. With that said, I will leave uh, over to Martin.
our CFO, who's also in the call. Thank you, Christopher. Uh, so the quarterly report itself is, is packed with a lot of numbers and details. So I thought uh, we go through the, the high level, high level um, overview in this in this call, and then leave more room for questions in the end. Um, so net sales increased by 38% compared to the same quarter last year, uh, ending at 27.2 million sec in the quarter. Um, and that growth was not affected by any acquisition. So the organic growth was also 38%, which is actually uh, accelerated organic growth compared to the same period last year. The gross margin was 81% in the quarter in line with, with recent quarters. And we continue to see clear signs of the scalability of the business model that we talked about um, in the last quarterly report, uh, which, which led to um, a sharp increase in EBTA compared to last year, uh, plus 9.2 million, million sec, which corresponds to a margin of 34%. And um, the one thing that sticks out the most in this report is the strong cash flow, I think. Um, we generated 16.6 million sec in in cash flow from uh, from operations, uh, which is almost a, a four or quadruple, uh, which is almost quadrupled uh, compared to Q4 2022. And the strong cash flow trickles into the bank account as well, of course. And we ended a quarter with a cash balance of 37.7 million sec, uh, where the net cash is up almost um, 7 million sec compared to Q3. Um, so, and and uh, and a strong solvency ratio of 86% means that we have a lot of financial flexibility as well. So going into the uh, net revenue details here, uh, we are adding the second largest building block ever in this kind of building block slide, uh, which confirms that we are at this new level that we've talked about in the last in the last quarter, um, we had we had a few previous quarters. We were where we were around or slightly below twenty million sec each quarter, and now we are closer to thirty. So kind of confirming that new new level. Um, and this quarter itself is twenty seven point two million, as I, as I mentioned, and the growth was thirty eight percent. And for the full year, net net revenue landed on. Uh, 97 million sec, and that was also up 38% compared to the full year 2022. So going into the gross profit, um, that grew also in the quarter up to 22 million sec in the quarter, uh, which corresponds to a margin of 81%. Um, and we've been in that area in the last in the last kind of six to eight quarters, something like that. And in absolute terms, we had a gross profit during the whole year of 2023 of almost 80 million sec. Um, and it is these high gross margins and the and the absolute kind of money money from it that allows us to uh, spend and invest um, resources into revenue generating activities and foremost product development and also sales and marketing. And if we go to sales and marketing slide, we have continued with these investments um, and we've also experienced over the last kind of year or two in increased improvement and a, a larger focus on enterprise clients. And we did in 2023, we spent uh, pretty much the same amount in uh, as we did in 2022 on sales and marketing activities, 15.3 million sec uh, in the year. And uh, that corresponds to 16% uh, both during the year and also in in Q4, um, and that's a little bit lower than what we than our previous guidance. Um, and if we move to EBTA, uh, as I mentioned, we we continue to see the scalability in the business model, and and also some synergies still from the acquisitions um, of of GetID and DataCorp, which which led to a strong increase in EBTA. So we had 9.2 million sec of EBTA in the in the quarter, which corresponds to a margin of 34%. And for the full year, we had 27.2 million sec uh, of EBTA, which corresponds to a margin of 28%. And if you, as you can see in here, it's a it's a quite big increase compared to the full year of 2022. It's almost a five-folded uh, year over year. And um, finally, if we go to the uh, cash position, we ended the, the quarter with with cash of almost 38 million sec. Um, 
it is a bit down compared to to last year uh but uh as we kind of reached this new level in the last two quarters we have started generating cash and and net cash was up almost 7 million sec only in this uh quarter quarter 4 uh which which kind of indicates we are at this new level where we are self sufficient and cash flow generating and uh, the high equity ratio of 86% in combination with these positive cash flows means that we now have a quite a lot of financial flexibility and, uh, and with that, I'll hand it back to Christopher for some uh, final comments and uh, Q&A. Thank you, Martin. Uh, just to sort of summarize the, the points that both me and Martin has mentioned, we, we see strong cash flows uh, thanks to this fivefold fold EBITDA that we had during, last, uh, during the full year. Um, and we have delivered now organically without acquisition uh, acquisitions, uh, uh, and we do this with a strong net revenue retention. Uh, although in this specific quarter it's slightly lower than the previous one, still the net revenue retention and the fact that our clients continue to work with us and expand their usage is really a key driver to understand how we can fivefold the EBITDA uh, basically in one year. And also commercial, commercially, we have never been in a better position, and uh, we hope that translates to, to some news uh, to come. Um, with that, I, I think uh, we can open up for, for questions. Okay, so thank you for that presentation. And we have a lot of questions that has been uh, submitted here. So the first question is, Cash flow is at uh, is at high levels. Can we expect these high levels to be maintained? I think, uh, in, in a general sense, definitely um, there will be differences quarter to quarter sometimes. But I think the key driver behind the high cash flow is the profitability, and the profitability in turn is driven by the scale. So, uh, if we continue to grow uh, the way we have historically been growing, uh, the profitability should continue step by step to increase, which trickles down in, into cash flow. So uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The growth is at 38%, but still lower compared to Q4 uh, 2022, I think, Deminer. What is behind it? Uh, the, the, the organic growth uh, in Q4 was 38% uh, year on year, and actually it was uh, only 31% uh, uh, one year back. So, so we are growing faster organically, but I, I guess the question refers to that the revenue is lower than the revenue in Q3. And uh, yeah, I'll refer back to, to what I said the, uh, regarding the travel the travel segment and their usage uh, or seasonality, which is affecting affecting our volumes in turn. So it's driven mainly by, by that. Yes, okay. So you mentioned new modules that help you attract enterprise customers. Can you tell us a bit more about them and what problems they solve? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, in the end, it is the fact that we create unique and, and, and valuable software that solves our customers' needs that um, enables this growth that we have seen uh, historically. And uh, we've added two, two modules uh, during Q4. One is called BotLens. It's uh, a solution to ensure that you don't have automated systems. Uh, uh, populating or, or, or uh, trying to act as a, as a real person. Uh, and the other, other module is regarding an analysis of signatures, uh, not to e-sign documents, not to, to, to make legally binding documents, but to, to use signatures as a way to, or act, actually as an alternative to other ways of biometrically verifying uh, a person. That both of those modules are uh, fully in production now and, and starting to, to trickle in some revenue from, but they also sets us apart from the competition and uh, it's modules that we have created uh, by listening to our biggest partners and their needs. Mm. Check-in shows a continued strong EBITDA margin. What long-term goals does the company have for that? 
uh, and the long-term goal is to maximize the sum of the organic growth, uh, the organic growth, uh, or basically the growth revenue growth per share, and EBITDA margin. That's the sum of those uh, should be maximized. So we don't have specific tar targets for EBITDA, but I think it's fair to expect if we manage to keep growing the top line, uh, the margins should improve uh, over time. Mm -hmm. uh, were you surprised that there are such large seasonal variations within travel? Uh, in one way, yes, although it's maybe not that surprising when you think about it, but uh, maybe yes, to some extent we were. Uh, on the other hand, for us, our key focus is to get new customers in, make sure that the customers we have expand their usage and that we take a bigger part part of their check-ins so to speak and, and that has been our focus and then if their if their volumes are are coming uh slightly not not even throughout the year it, it in the long run that that doesn't really matter too much to be honest and our focus is to to take more and more and i think what the low seasonality now hopefully comes back as as a high season uh, uh, over the summer okay uh, you have re relatively recently updated your financial target. How do you see the target linked to the result in Q4? Um, yeah, also this question, I think uh, we touched upon in the, in the slide regarding the financial targets. Uh, just reiterate my answer there, which is we feel confident with the ambition we have set uh, of 80% uh, for, for the full year. Uh, and yeah, I think we're quite in line with that for the for the first two quarters uh, that we have had this goal. Mm -hmm. uh, you're in discussion with several international airlines. Uh, on what time horizon can the market expect effects from those discussions? It's um, I don't think we make any clear prognosis on that. Uh, we have seen that enterprise clients uh, take several quarters to <clears throat> to to get live and, and to 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 get expansion and and if we look at our big airline client that has to have a, taken you know three or four quarters uh, maybe even five to to fully expand the, the corporation so I think those uh, we should see long term uh, but hopefully um, some of these can can have an effect on the on the later part of this year. Mm. Can you share some numbers or trends around the growth broken down into separate segments and or products? Um, not really. We, we, I think we published that uh, in our upcoming annual report. So I think we'll refer mainly to that. But, uh, um, uh, but generally, of course, uh, the travel segment last year was growing was growing faster than the other segments and, and has a bigger share than, than previous year. But uh, otherwise, I'll refer to the annual report. Okay. Discussions are being held with the major fintech customer about in-depth collaboration. What does the potential look like in the long term? Should one expect lead time as long as with the air, large airline you work with? Uh, first of all, this uh, large fintech client, uh, we are in a revenue generating phase. So it's not that we're discussing or trying to sell something. We are in a, in a revenue generating phase. What we're talking about is, is trying to, or basically we're building to make sure that they are integrating more functionality and using us in a wider concept, uh, context than, than today. Uh, that work, I think, uh, normally... Uh, like I said, with airlines, it's something that could take maybe three, four quarters. Uh, the, the difference with this client is it's a tech native client. It's a, uh, I would say, a strong technology uh, driven company. So hopefully it will go slightly faster than what we've seen with other enterprise clients. Uh, but again, uh, I think you should have patience uh, and look at the long term uh, effect of this. So may maybe a couple of quarters or so. Hmm? You have added several new segments in recent years. Which do you think have the greatest chance of contributing in the future, in addition to travel and fintech? Yeah, I think um, 
we see uh, we have some verticals where we have a strong uh, footprint and, and a good sort of momentum and, and that's our focus right now to to keep adding more airlines adding more fintech clients and, and build around the strengths we have but we also have more than 20 other industries uh, where we have customers uh, so i think that the, the potential is quite wide um, and it's not a vertical per se, but I think our platform and partner uh, corporations and strategy that we have to use technical platforms and basically resellers uh, to make sure we get the wider and faster distribution of our software um, is a promising strategy that we have started working with successfully. We have a few cases and I, I think over the year, the importance of those uh, plat of, of those technical corporations should increase, and and my hope is that we'll bring uh, more clients from from different sectors in. Uh, so I don't have a specific sort of next sec sector in mind, uh, but we have a wide array of of possibilities. Mm, I understand. So the last question is. What specifically are you looking for in terms of new acquisitions? Yeah, also, also here, I guess, uh, whoever wrote the question, it's a good question. And maybe they wrote it before my, my slide or hopefully before we went through this. But I'll reiterate also here that uh, we're looking for technology uh, within niche areas that when we add it to our software, we can create an even better software for our, our customers and in the, in the end for the end consumer. Uh, that's important. That's sort of our guiding principle. We're also looking for sort of product-driven companies with, with a, uh, expertise and, and a strong tree, uh, team. Um, we're not looking to just, uh, uh, to just add revenue the, 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 the first quarter, sort of the, the, the coming quarter. We see this uh, over a long period of time and we make the acquisitions, not really to grow this year or, or the year we do the acquisition, but over the coming three to five years. We have a long-term perspective on it. And uh, yeah, we're, we're looking, and as I said, I hope we, we can come back with, with something because we're convinced there is a large potential to, to generate uh, shareholder value by adding further components. Okay. Well, then I have to thank you both Christopher and uh, Martin for this presentation. Thank you. And uh, I also like to thank all the listeners that tuned in and uh, posted all these questions. And uh, with that, I say thank you for the day. <laughs>